اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I start in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I seek salvation from shaitan, the accursed. Dearest viewers, my brothers and sisters from all over the world, Assalamu alaikum, jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you at all times. Welcome to another episode of the Ramadan show with me, your host, Dr. Shabir Tijani. Today, once again, we'll be looking at a, a variety of different issues to be your one-stop shop for the month of Ramadan. Like I've said before, we will be with you on social media. Please join in with us using the hashtag on Twitter, IHTVRamadan. Also join us on Instagram and Facebook. And inshallah, this episode will be uploaded onto YouTube tomorrow. Before we commence with the show, I just want to quote a hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam, where he says, knowledge is the lock, but the question is the key. In this episode, the specific trait that we'll be focusing on for the spiritual refinement part of this episode is jealousy. Jealousy is one of the oldest negative traits that we find in human history and humankind. And it is the ultimate and the most fundamental cause of the fight between good and evil. After all, it was Iblis who in the heavens said to God that, how can you make me bow down to Adam? Peace and blessings be upon him. After all, I am more superior to him. And this jealousy is what led shaitan to bring us or to come into our lives and to try and make us falter in our quest to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a very specific and fundamental difference between jealousy and envy. And we must try and understand what that is. Jealousy essentially is when someone else has got a specific trait or a specific quality or they have something which they have within their means that you would like yourself to have and for them not to have. However, envy is when they have something and you wish that you could have the same thing too. Now the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has said, Jealousy eats an iman, a person's iman, in the same way fire eats away a dried wood. So as you can see, it is a very, very burdensome disease of the soul. However, there are many things we can do and ways in which we can lead our lives to try and avoid becoming jealous. And there's some practical steps that I will now tell you, ways in which you can start contemplating, thinking, philosophizing, in order to make sure that this disease of the soul does not affect you. Firstly, we must try and understand what the causes of jealousy are. I have come across six qualities that would be the precursor to someone becoming jealous. The first one is enmity. The second one is weak faith or weak iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, pride and arrogance plays a huge role in the beginnings and the fundamentals of jealousy. And then there's the desire for power and materialistic things in this world. And that can be something that makes someone jealous. Next, it's a, a bad intrinsic nature. So if you intrinsically have bad qualities, or if someone else has intrinsically bad qualities, they're more prone to becoming jealous of those around them. And finally, it's the harsh heart. Someone who's committed sins or who has specific traits due to which their heart has become cold and harsh tends to become more jealous of those around them. Now we will talk a little bit about how to overcome jealousy. Obviously jealousy being one of the most 
one of the worst traits that a, a human being can have and it's one of the causes why there's a lot of breakups of relationships in society, why there is a lot of problems in society because greed causes jealousy and once someone gets jealous they want bad for others around them and good for themselves and therefore that causes a decline in society and a breakup of the fabric of, soci or, or, of society and, and social uh, um, interactions. So how can you overcome this negative trait? Firstly, you must try and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, they despise this quality, the quality of jealousy in a person's heart, in a person's being, in a person's soul. And if you can acknowledge, if you do have this trait of jealousy within you, the first step, like dealing with any other negative trait, is to try and acknowledge that actually this is a disease that you have within your soul and thereafter you can start to deal with it. A practical step to try and get rid of jealousy is to try and interact with the person that you're jealous of. Try to help them in whatever way you can. And try and understand why you're jealous of them. For example, if you're jealous of someone for whatever reason, try to praise him or her and try to make them feel more elevated and so that you do not feel jealous of them anymore. Initially, this is quite hard to start off with. But once you start doing it, you realize that actually it increases the humility within yourself and lowers your arrogance and your pride, as well as giving the other person more self-esteem, more self-confidence, and bringing them closer to you, creating a sense of brotherhood or sisterhood. Thirdly, remember that on the day of judgment in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at your physical state. He doesn't look at the status that you received in this world. He doesn't look at the materialistic gains that you acquired within your life. He looks at the purity of your heart, the sincerity of your soul, the near and the intention for all of your actions. And after this, He will make His judgment. Therefore, always have this in mind and plan to cleanse your soul from any diseases and the worst of diseases, jealousy being one of them. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, there is a morsel of flesh in the body. If it is rectified, the whole body is rectified. And if it is corrupt, then the whole body is corrupt. Indeed, it is the same with the heart. So you, this, in this phrase, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, emphasizes that a single negative trait can completely ruin you and destroy your soul. And getting rid of that negative trait can actually revitalize your soul and make your soul ready for, the, for meeting your Lord on the Day of Judgment. Next, it is really important to try and get to the fundamentals of why people are jealous or why people have this disease of jealousy within their soul. And the answer to that is, is simple. And that is a desire, a wish for worldly and materialistic things. And it's ultimately caused by greed. When someone has greed in their heart, they want everything material around them. So a way to get rid of this is to try and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every turn. Try and reassess, reevaluate your intention at every turn. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where you've come from and it will be your ultimate destiny because once you're in your grave that is who you're answerable to. I've said it many times in the previous show and I'll say it again many many more times during the shows that we have in the coming nights that it is really really important to focus and constantly remember your death because it is only when you remember your death and your grave that is when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember where you're heading to because this world is, a, is borrowed time. It is a very temporary life that we have and it's very short. So if you constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the grave where you'll end up, you will surely try and cleanse your heart of all the diseases that will take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember that this dunya is temporary. And everything that you do within this world, you're accountable for. And it is only when you do that, you will be able to achieve that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
It has been narrated upon the authority of Imam al-Sadiq. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Say not this is Ramadan, or that Ramadan has departed, and that Ramadan has arrived. For surely Ramadan is one of the names of Allah Azza the mighty, the glorious, who neither arrives nor departs. Surely that which arrives and departs is ephemeral. Instead, say, the month of Ramadan, not Ramadan alone. In this segment of the show, we look at how people from around the world prepare their day-to-day -day lives for the month of Ramadan. And today, because we are going to be talking about the heart of our spirituality, I wanted to focus on the heart of the Shia world, which is Karbala. And I will talk a little bit about how the people of Karbala prepare their day-to-day -day lives for the holy month, and also talk a little bit about the shrines and how they also run their day-to-day -day activities throughout this month. We will talk about the people to begin with. The people here in Karbala, because it's so hot, they tend to, if they can, try not to work during the hottest parts of the day. So the hottest parts of the day are around midday. And if they can, the laborers especially, they try to work through the night after the iftar time so that during the daytime they can rest as much as possible. However, for some people that is not possible, for teachers and for doctors, for other people who cannot postpone their work to other parts of the day, they have to continue working. The Iraqi people are nat naturally very giving, so what they will try to do is try and host other people for iftar and give them as much as they can. So whether it's a date or just a glass of milk, they will try and give them food and water and sustenance during this month in any way, shape or form that they can. Now moving on to the shrines, as you're aware that in Karbala we have the shrine or shrines of two of the greatest personalities in Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and Abu al-Fadl alayhi salam. And their shrines were in a very, very routine cycle of events during these days throughout the 30 days of uh, Ramadan. So typically in the morning after Salat al-Fajr, they would have Ziyarat al-Ashura in both shrines. And then at Dhuhr, or after Salat al-Dhuhr, they would have the recitation of the Holy Qur'an. This recitation you can hear live on Imam Hussein TV. Followed by this, during iftar time, families would gather in Bain al Haramain. They would eat the iftar and try and share it amongst each other, each other and share it amongst the passers-by as well. Because this is a month where people come together, where they show love towards each other. And the month of Ramadan is so special because they're in the heartland of the Shia world. So they become even more giving around the shrines and in Bain al Haramain. And finally, after Maghrib Salah, there is Dua, dua Iftita in both shrines as well as in Bain al Haramain. And people tend to join in these duas. And these duas you can also catch on Imam Hussein TV. So it is a very special time of year. And the routine is very, very spiritually elevating for those in Karbala and you'll be able to catch and keep up to date with all these activities throughout the month on Imam Hussein TV. Like every day, like every evening, I would like to encourage you also to send in your videos to let us see, let us into your homes and also let us see how you prepare for the month of Ramadan, how you go about your day-to-day -day activities so that we can share it with the rest of the world. After all, as an Ummah, we are one body and we would like to share how you prepare for this month with other people from all across the globe and other Shia and lovers of Imam al-Hussein. Dearest brothers and sisters, I hope that the holy month of Ramadan have been so beneficial to you so far. 
I hope that you have been using and being blessed with the blessings of this holy month and do not forget us in your prayers and do not forget to pray for the hasten reappearance of Imam of our time Imam al-Mahdi may Allah hasten his blessed reappearance wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Dearest Imam Hussein TV viewers, welcome again. I have another brother here. I will ask him a few questions regarding the holy month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Ya'ana wa sahana. Mumkin ta'arufna nafsak wa tahshinna shwaya an ajwa' al-Ramadaniya? Akid, akhukum Talal Abdelameer Layl, sahab mahal azia al-Topman, Karbala al-Muqaddasa. بالنسبة لله رمضان بكربلاء مختلف جدا إن شاء الله تشوفون يعني تعيشون اللحظات الحلوة هذه لأن رمضان مختلف جذريا من ناحية الحياة الترتيب المواد الرمضانية الناس التعاطف المحبة الرحمة الصلاة الزيارات متكررة وزيارات التي تقدم إن شاء الله هذا الله سهل حلو رمضان كلش لطيف Uh, brother is greeting you and he's greeting the, the Islamic Ummah and he wishes all the best uh, for you. Uh, he is asking, uh, he's saying that uh, the holy month of Ramadan in the holy city of Karbala is totally different. The atmosphere is different, uh, people are different, uh, the meals are different, uh, people usually go and visit each other. The brotherhood and sisterhood is stronger during the holy month of uh, Ramadan. Okay. إقبال الناس شلون على على المجمعات على التبضع خلال شهر رمضان؟ والله التبضع ممتاز جدا لأن من ناحية الحالة الحركة وتعرف الأيام العيد المبارك إن شاء الله إذا الله سهل يكون إقبال على الأزياء ملابس أطفال رجالي نسائي هذه فرحة تكون فرحة غامرة لدى الأطفال خاصة إن الأيام العيد مميز جدا من ناحية إقبال على العيديات إقبال على الملابس إقبال شيء تغيير شيء جديد من بعد الامتحانات وبعد العطلة فالشيء هذا مقبول حلو جدا. Okay. Uh, brother is saying that uh, uh, because uh, the, the the holy Eid of Eid al-Fitr is so special here in, in in Karbala and in Iraq in general, and especially for the children, uh, after uh, doing the exams, as you know, the children are doing the exams uh, before the holy month of Ramadan, uh, and uh, during the fast days they are uh, uh, waiting for the Eid to come and shopping and and to renew their uh, their clothes. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about nutritional tips for the month of Ramadan. As you can imagine, the holy month of Ramadan, due to the fasting periods, physically can drain individuals. So it is really, really important for all of you to understand what happens to your bodies during this month, during the fasting period, and also what you can do to try and ease, essentially ease the physical burden on your body. In this episode, I'll be talking about nutrition and things that you can eat and drink in order to try and help you to get through the day. This will not only help you physically but also spiritually because it will give you more focus, more emphasis, more time that you can devote towards amal and towards spiritually elevating yourselves. During the month of Ramadan, during the fasting periods, obviously on a day-to-day -day basis when you're not fasting, when you're eating foods at regular intervals, your body has a constant supply of energy. Now this energy is primarily there in the form of sugars. So when you eat any food, whether they're carbohydrates or simple sugars as well, that uh, sugar gets absorbed into your body and remains in your blood system so that the body can utilize that sugar in order to provide you with energy. However, during the month of Ramadan, when you have prolonged periods of fasting, the sugar that you acquire from foods isn't there in your system. Therefore, you have to try and use other sources of energy. 
when this happens, what normally happens is you break down other things in your body such as protein, so muscle, and fats in order to produce uh, energy sources so that your body can utilize that for energy. The other thing that happens to your body is obviously due to the lack of fluid and water, you tend to become very dehydrated. And also you lose a lot of other vital salts in your body such as sodium or potassium, chloride, all of these get lost through specific means, but the most commonest cause of loss of salts is through your sweat. So again, it is really important to replenish these stores when you have time to eat after your iftar. So today in this episode, we'll be looking at good foods that you can eat in order to try and keep your energy levels up. And also good foods and, and good things that you can take in order to keep yourself rehydrated because after all, the last thing you'd want is to be so physically exhausted during this month that you do not have time to focus and think about the most important part of, part of this month, which is the spiritual element of it and the element of it where you can elevate your soul so you can achieve closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, during the time of iftar, obviously in different countries, the period of fast and the period of being able to eat differs from place to place, region to region country to country but it is really important that you have an idea in your mind how you can keep yourself going through the day now where I'm from which is the United Kingdom because I'm a, I'm a doctor there I get a lot of patients who ask me ask me about the month of Ramadan firstly whether the prolonged periods of fasting are physically a, a human being is physically able to fast for that period of time and secondly if they do fast what they can do in order to make the most out of their day so that they're not hungry and so thirsty so dehydrated for the whole period of the day and for this the advice I give them is that if they have a good routine throughout their day even if they're working the fast can be bearable it can be tolerable as long as you eat the right things at the right times obviously during the period of uh, after iftar and also if you are sensible through the day as well obviously in very very high levels of heat and humidity you lose a lot of fluid so the first thing to do when you're opening your fast or when you're eating your food is to make sure that you rehydrate yourself adequately now there's many uh, theories out there on how to rehydrate yourself effectively some of these include sports drinks or other rehydration solutions however studies that have been carried out in many parts of the world for, uh, which has been specific to sports medicine actually show that milk has been a very very good source of uh, replenishment for fluid the reason being is that due to the fat content in milk uh, in any foods that has a high fat content the, 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 the material will stay in your gut in your digestive system for a prolonged period of time so what happens during this period of time is that the water is slowly going into your system over many, many hours rather than it being uh, sent, put into your system during a very short period of time. So during this period of time, the first advice I'd give you is try and drink some milk during the periods of eating and drinking. Secondly, as I mentioned before, you do lose a lot of energy stores such as sugars. Now, a lot of people think that the way to replenish these stores are to eat lots of sugar when you're opening your fast. In fact, it's on the contrary, because what happens when you do this is that you have a spike of sugar in your blood system, and as a result, you have a spike of insulin in your system. And what insulin does is that it absorbs the glucose, the sugars, into your cells very, very quickly, so it doesn't remain in your blood system for a prolonged period of time. And once that sugar is gone, then you don't have anything left in your system. The way that you can overcome this issue is to concentrate and focus on specific types of food in order to give you a prolonged burst or prolonged supply of sugar in your system. So the, the best food to eat in this situation is complex carbohydrates, so things like rice and pasta. The reason being that because the, the, the molecules are quite complex, it takes time for your gut to digest these and as a result these slowly get absorbed into your system over a prolonged period of time so they keep you energized for a longer period of time and the sugars get into your system rather than having spikes of sugars you get a more more prolonged slow release 
of sugar into your system. It keeps you energized for longer periods of time. The other thing that I mentioned is loss of salt. Obviously, it's very, very important. Salts are essential for our body because without these salts, uh, organs such as our heart and our brains will not be able to function the way that they do. So it's very, very important for you to replenish these stores regularly after you have your iftar. Now, the hadith of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, show us that it is very, very good to open your fast with a, with a pinch of salt or a taste of salt. And there is actually scientific basis behind this because salt, which usually exists in the form of sodium chloride, is the most commonest thing. Those are the most commonest salts that you lose through your sweat. So by having some salt when you open your fast is actually very good for you. And what it does is it very, very quickly replenishes those stores of lost salts. Finally, the last thing I want to focus on is other types of foods that would be good to eat during this this month of Ramadan. Reason being is that it is a very unique month, not only spiritually and obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens His doors of mercy to you during this month, but also physically it is a very testing time. It can be a very testing time for individuals, but also your body does not go through this routine on a day-to-day -day basis for the rest of the year. So it's a very new thing for your body to try and get adapted to. And as a result, your body goes through many changes during this month your met metabolic rate changes and the way that you deal with specific foods that get put into your system also changes. So you have to try and adapt that and change what you eat to try and uh, uh, counteract for that. So specific foods that you can eat or focus on during this month especially are the lighter foods. So like the hadith says, it is very important not to overeat when you're having your iftar, not to overfill your stomach with food. It is important to drink plenty of water, but also to leave some space in your stomach. Because if you overeat, not only do you feel sluggish and bloated, but also it affects you spiritually. Because that person who has a full stomach all the time cannot uh, gain spiritual elevation. Because they're so focused on trying to digest that food, and they're so burdened down by it, that they don't have time to focus on anything else. So really important not to overeat during this month. So my tips to you are to try and take foods that are light, such as soups, to open your, open your fast with. And also utilize the, the, the gifts that God has given you in the sense that the natural fruits and vegetables that we have, the fresh fruits and vegetables, try and have those because, again, they have a good supply of sugars in them. And also they have other vitamins and minerals that will be very useful to you to keep you going through the day because not only do you lose uh, specific um, uh, sugars, salts, fluid, but also it is important to replenish the stores of vitamins and minerals because during the day whilst you're not eating regularly, you're not getting that regular supply of vitamins and minerals. So you need to make sure that you replenish those in, in, in the time that you have for eating. Finally, I'd just like to finish on, uh, on these last words. It is really important to remember that every food that you receive, anything that you eat, is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This may be slightly diverting from the topic of this specific talk, but remember those brothers and sisters around the world who do not have food to eat and do not have water to drink because they even fast. And whilst you're eating your food and drinking your, your water or whatever drinks you're drinking, remember them. And it is really important, like I said before, not to overeat. Remember not to waste food. Because surely for the food that you waste, it is someone else's meal, someone else's food that you're actually throwing away. So remember those who are in need. And surely if you do that, you'll be more sensible about the way that you eat and about the things that you eat. The sermon continues by several instructions. O people, Prophet Muhammad wasallam states, O people, the gates of heaven are open in this month, the month of Ramadan. So ask your Lord not to close them. The phrase, the gates are open, the gates of being open, has at least two meanings. Number one, the chance of someone entering heaven in this month is higher and greater than the rest of the months across the years, across the year. Number two, due to the openness of heaven's gates, all kind of divine mercy in heaven are ready to encompass 
the, the servants in this world, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these make the sleep and breaths of the faithful in the month of Ramadan, like the inhabitants of heaven, glorification of Allah and worship. Although the gates of heaven are being opened, the Holy Prophet warns people that if they do not appreciate this great opportunity, subsequently Allah the Almighty will close them. The situation of the gates of heaven, sorry, the gates of uh, fire are quite the contrary. Prophet ﷺ states, and the gates of fire are closed in this, in this month, so ask your Lord not to open them. Along these lines, the condition of Satan's are described as follows, and the Satan's and, and Satan's in, are in chains, so ask your Lord not to dominate them over you. Although Satan and his assistants are chained up in this month, the month of Ramadan, committing sin results in releasing them. Therefore, while the month of Ramadan is the best month to some people and to, to a specific group of people, the month of Ramadan can also be some a sort of worse than to a specific, also to a specific group of people. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran, a cure and mercy, this month, this month is a cure and mercy for the faithful and it increases the wrongdoers only in loss. This is in chapter 17, verse 82. The fourth Imam of Ahlul Bayt, Imam al-Sajjad, peace be upon him, states in his farewell supplication that, O month of Ramadan, peace be upon you. How long were you for the wrongdoers and how magnificent were you in the hearts of the faithful? By implied, as implied by, his, by the supplication and as proved by experiences, the month of Ramadan for those who do not fast deliberately without any religious excuse seems like a whole year and every moment of that year is some, co some sort of torture for them. On the contrary, those who do their best to appreciate this month find it passing quickly and are concerned about not losing a second without taking advantage of taking fully advantage of it. For this episode, I would like to dedicate the poetry, the recitation, to the person, the individual, the personality who is the foundation of our religion, whose name beats in all of our hearts, who is the ultimate saviour of humankind. I want to dedicate this to Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam. This poetry is called I Will Come Crawling to You Hussein and it was written by myself and my brother Abbas. And it was written around the time of Arba'een when so many of the Zawar were heading towards Imam al Hussein, and we were left behind in our country. And this is our way of expressing our grief and remembering Imam al Hussein. Every day it cuts me inside I'm so very far from your side I would give away these eyes just to catch a glimpse of your shrine if i had to cross the seas and every desert in between i will come crawling to you hussein i will come crawling to you Hussein they can cut my arms and my legs they can take everything that I have I will come crawling to you Hussein I will come crawling to you Hussein I can tell you that I'm insane in the love of my master Hussein in this universe there's no pain that can ever keep me away every inch that I come your way every beat of my heart will say I will come crawling 
to you who say, I will come crawling to you who say. You just have to look at this world and see your lovers are tortured and hurt. They can use their tanks and their guns. We will stand together as one. They can tear us limb from limb. But our, but our souls will say will from say within, I will come crawling, crawling to you, Hussein. I will come crawling to you, Hussein. They can put a gun to my head. They can threaten to shoot me dead. They can wound me till I'm red. They can try to kill me and jet with my every remaining breath. With every ounce of strength I possess, I will come crawling to you, Hussein. I will come crawling to you, Hussein. They can cut my arms and my legs. They can take everything that I have. I will come crawling to you, Hussein. I will come crawling to you, As I conclude this episode, I just want to leave you with a final thought, a few words, a philosophy that you can implement in your day-to-day -day life in order to try and improve not only as a human being, but to also try to make the most out of this month. What I want to say, the final philosophy that I have is that an ocean of water cannot sink a ship unless the water enters the ship. No matter how vast the quantity of the water is, or no matter how strong the current is. In the same way, negativity cannot affect you unless you let it inside you. The reason why I think this is a very important saying or a very important philosophy to try and implement is that positivity is a good start, it's a starting point for ibadah, for good actions. Because if you let negativity inside you, you'll start doubting yourself your self-confidence will diminish and your, your, essentially your being will become very small inside and as a result your soul suffers. So it is very, very important to try and stay positive and to not let negativity of those around you affect you. As I finish this episode, I just want to remind you once again to please join us on social media, to join us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube, and don't forget to send us your videos as well. Inshallah, I finally ask you to please pray for us here at Imam Hussein TV. And also do not forget to pray for the reappearance of our awaited Savior, Al-Mahdi alayhi salam. Inshallah, I look forward to seeing you all very soon. And inshallah, we hope that we can inspire you for this month of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.